Hi everyone, um, it's Rachel and I know it's late, um, but I am making some mixed media pages and I thought I'd just turn the camera on and um, just share with you what I'm doing. So um, I just started digging in my recycle bin and I wanna use up some paint. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a little challenge for those of you who are joining me. Hi, thanks for joining me late this evening. Um, please say hello so that I can say hello to you. Um, so we're going to just get started. So what I'd like you to do is if you have some time, craft along with me tonight. Um, just grab some paper and some paint, um, a gift card or something to move the paint with. And we're gonna just do a little challenge. So I'm gonna set these ones to the side. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just grabbed a pile of papers um, that are just scraps that I need to do something with. So we're gonna play with these tonight. Um, so we're gonna do a challenge, we're gonna do four minutes. Um, and some of you may have seen the five by five challenge. A lot of mixed media artists are doing that and have been doing that for a while. Um, it's where you take five minutes a day um, and you play around with different techniques. So I'm gonna do the four by four challenge today. I'm gonna just, just work with um, acrylic paints. So we're gonna start with those. And I'm using these colors because I'm going to be using some of this ephemera and my latest design team um, kit for Calico Collage. And that is called Charming Forest. Um, and here's some of the paper for that. So this is where I got my inspiration um, with the purples and the blues and things like that. So um, let's get started. So I'm going to start by just putting a little bit of paint. Um, on a, my plate here. And I'm just going to open up my paints. And we're going to set a timer on my phone for four minutes. So if you'll give me a second, I'll open that up. And after four minutes, we're going to stop and we're going to move on to another, um, another task. So you can see I've set my phone to four minutes. Um, all I'm going to be using for this challenge is my four colors of acrylic paint, my um, gift card, and scrap paper. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So um, I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to spread the paint on as quickly as possible. If you have not used this technique, um, I haven't used this a whole lot with my gift card. I like how it just smooths the paper and, and just makes it really pretty. It kind of blends the colors for you. Um, I'm stacking them because it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to be covering the back of these with something else. And so I'm going to get my colors in here. The pink is really bright, um, so I have to kind of use it with moderation. If there's something you don't like and you want to tone it down, the white will tone it down. Um, so this is a sort of a glossy page. Um, it came out of a Better Homes and Gardens. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out because it does have this sort of 70s. So we're going to just try to spread on here really quickly. All right. So we're at about three minutes. Oops, I probably should not have stuck that on there. Um, some of this paper is old and 
peels quickly. So just kind of playing around with some paint. These pages that have colors in them that you don't want, just add white to them. And I'm just using some wax paper um, to lay in between so that the pages don't get stuck on each other. It will also help with the drying process. I'm gonna try to pick up the paint that's on my plastic container here, or plastic mat. Hi everyone, for those of you who are joining, um, I would love to know who's with me tonight. It almost looks like marbled paper when you pick it up. Um, for those of you who haven't done any marbling yet, I haven't. Um, but doesn't that kind of look marbled? It's very pretty, easy to do. You don't need a lot of supplies. Wow, that's pretty. So we're getting quite a few papers done. Get in your recycling bin. Um, this is from one of the kits that, kind of making mud here. Uh, one of the kits that I had on my shop. And so I decided to dig out all those printable pieces that I wasn't using. Okay. So I'm gonna just finish this last one. Um, but that was four minutes, and let me finish this one because I already kind of laid it in the paint. So if you're a junk journal uh, person or a mixed media artist, or you are a scrapbooker and you just want something a little different, all right. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and close up my paints, but I am going to leave my white out um, because we may find that we want to lighten some things. I'm gonna take my paint palette and clean it up. Hope everybody's having a great night. I see that there's a few of us in here watching tonight. Thanks for stopping by. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, my channel is Rachel Super Cute Create or Super Cute Creations, and um, I do a lot of stuff with junk journals, um, a lot of embellishments, and I just love to to teach and share what I do. So. It's sort of the, the whole purpose of my channel. All right. So kind of cleaned this up. So the first level or first grade of media that we used was recycled material and paint. So I'm going to just kind of pull this pile over here. All right, so I'm gonna flip this upside down because this top one is the one we just finished, so it's the most wet. And I'm gonna flip this over so we can see how many pages did we get done in four minutes. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11. So we just did 11 pages here in four minutes time. Um, they're not completely dry. These kind of look like mud. So they're definitely going to need some support. So once you do this, um, thanks for the thumbs up. Whoever just gave me the thumbs up, I appreciate that. Um, I'm not sure. I can't see anyone commenting. I'm not sure if anybody is out there trying to comment. Um, just see here for a minute. Okay, I'm not sure. So now what I do is I just kind of take a look at this one is kind of good on its own. It looks marbled. And so I'm just going to set that one aside. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with this one too. Um, this one needs a little work. This one needs a little work. And when I say it needs a little work, I'm just looking at, you know, does it look mostly the same? Um, does it need some more paint added to it or just something to spice it up a little bit. Um, I think this one I can work with and I can work with this one. Um, and this one, this one right here needs some work as well. So these, these four I'm okay with. I'm just gonna kind of set them to the side and leave, whoops, leave them as is. Um, but I am gonna go back I'm going to take just a little bit of white. Um, and I'm not going to time myself, but if you wanted to, you could. Um, you shouldn't take a lot of time to do this. So I'm going to just take this and I'm going to use this as another technique to give it some texture. And all I'm doing is just taking the side of my card and sort of making a little crosshatch format. And if I want to, I can spread it a little like that. Um, and it just gives it a nice little design or a little more element to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that over here to dry. Um, this one definitely needs more white just because it's showing through. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just try to cover up some more of that magazine picture. All right. So this one's definitely gonna need some more stamping or something like that, but we wanna make sure that we're giving it. Now you can take this and you can do sort of like a swirly pattern and give it a little more dimension if you want. You can keep layering the paint. So. For this one, I'm just gonna kind of lay it on here. Just lighten some spots. All right, I need a little more white paint. So I hope everybody's having a good night. Um, I see there's a few more people joining us. Thank you for joining, I appreciate it. Um, I haven't been feeling that well, so I actually laid down this afternoon, and which is why I'm up so late. Um, and I thought, well, I haven't done a video in a long time, and I haven't done a live video in a long time. Okay, so this this paper is very interesting. See how it took, it, it didn't spread like the other ones. It really stuck to that paper, but that's okay. Because we're going to come back and we're going to... Pick my cups up. There we go. All right. Sometimes I use the short end too, because you're gonna get a different look. 
Okay. All right. And we're going to kind of do the same thing. And all I'm doing is just turning my card back and forth. All right. Okay. So there are my mixed media pieces. So from there, um, if you're doing the five by five challenge, um, then you go back through and you pick another piece of media that you're going to work with. So I'm going to take my paints. I'm going to set them to the side. Um, and the next thing that I want to do is some stenciling. So um, I'm just going to get out some stencils that I have. And um, let's see. I think I'll work with one more. So I only want to work with four stencils. Um, let's see what other stencils do I want. Okay. So I think we'll work with this one too. All right. So here's the stencils we're going to work with. And the media that I'm going to use is going to be um, some spray paints and some glimmer mist. So let me grab a couple more glimmer mists. Oh, let's see here. All right, so I'm using um, Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. If you don't have any of this stuff, um, I didn't have any for a long time, and I watched everybody use it. Um, I am now absolutely love it. Um, you can buy Heidi Swap carries this color shine. Um, it's a little thicker than the Glimmer Mist, and the the shimmer stuff stays in the bottom of this more. And then Dilusions um, also has this ink spray, but this ink spray does not have any glitter in it. So we're gonna use um, these right here on our projects. And I'm gonna start um, with this one. And we're gonna just lay over our stencils. And one of the things that I like to do um, is I like to get some more scrap paper. And I'll show you why. So I'm just going to get a pile of scrap paper here. Um, okay. So we are going to take about four minutes again to do our next layer on this pile of paper that we just started on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my timer ready. I'm gonna take my lids off. All right, and we're gonna get started. So here we go. So one of the things I like to do is because I don't want to waste any of this ink is I use what I call a mop up page. Um, I learned that from um, Linda Israel and she mops up her stuff all the time. And then you can use these pages as well. So we're actually creating multiple pages at one time. All right. So, uh oh. This one's clogged up. So we're just adding some more dimension. Um, 
choose this piece right here. We're going to use this thicker. I don't know how many of you have played with um, distress inks and paints and sprays, but they're definitely fun. Um, this Dilusions, you can see that didn't stick very well to the paint. Uh, I didn't like it. So I'm going to try and try. Or, I'm sorry, it wasn't Dilusions. It was um, Heidi Swaps. Didn't stick very well to that. All right. So this one. Oh, isn't that pretty? Yeah, that, that is beautiful. And then you can just spray in spots. You don't have to stencil. Just give it a little bit of a spray. Pull it up with paper if you want to give it some dimension. Just keep stacking them up. Um, I'm just going to spray this one. I mean, you can definitely do whatever you want here. See, I just stamped that down and getting some beautiful, beautiful images here. And while we're doing this, we're actually with our mop-up pages making another set of papers. Um, let's do a little of this green. There. So... We kind of, let's see, what else do we have here? Grab some more of these papers. Oh, this one. We didn't do anything with this one yet. See how sometimes it'll stick to the paint and sometimes it won't. That pulled it all off the paint. So that's okay. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to lay down another stencil. And we're going to lift the stencil. And then we'll turn it this way and just, all right. So we have now have all of our pages and we've also created a couple more pages um, using our distressed inks. So I'm going to go ahead and cover my distressed inks. Oops. I'm sorry. My, my tattered angels glimmer mess. I don't know why I'm calling them distressed inks this evening. All right. And then because I worked on wax paper, I'm going to just take this. And I'm just going to mop up the rest of my inks. And I'm going to set these to the side. All right. So we are now at about 20 minutes. Um, and we have all of these papers that we've been working on. If you like this video, just give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. Um, I know for some reason I can't see if anybody's trying to talk. I'm not sure why. But um, if you'll give me a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate that. Okay, so we have all these papers now. All pretty much in the same color palette. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on some collage and, um, I have this napkin. This is the only napkin we use for collage. Uh, and we're just going to use bits and pieces of it. So, um, for those of you who haven't collaged before with napkins, um, you do have to separate them. 
And I'm just going to rip some pieces to start. Um, you can collage with a couple of different ways. You can collage with a glue stick. You can collage with um, Maj Podge. I'm going to use a glue stick today because we're going to keep layering. Um, and I want sort of that flat look. But there's lots of ways you can do this. So I'm just ripping my napkin. Um, as I said, you have to take the layers away. This is a single layer of, I love this text too. So I'm going to use this. All right. So you could have multiple, for this challenge, you could do multiple napkins. Um, you could do multiple pieces of tissue. Um, you could pretty much do anything you wanted. But I wanted to kind of stick with things that I knew people could probably come up with in their stash. Um, you know, one napkin. A lot of us don't have a huge napkin collection. I'm not someone that has a lot of napkins. I know some of you crafters out there have tons and tons of napkins. Um, I don't have a lot of napkins. I would love to have a lot of napkins, but um, so I'm just kind of ripping some things. Okay, so I think that's enough for us to get started. Um, I'm going to use all-purpose glue. All-purpose glue is a permanent glue, and um, I would recommend if you are doing this at home that you dry these really well in between. Um, I'm kind of using the ones that are dry first and setting the other ones. I have a lamp up here that I'm setting the other ones by. So, um, but they are, some of them are still damp and you want to make sure that they're, they're dry before you get started. So, all right, for this challenge, um, I'm going to do five minutes because it's going to take me a little bit longer to glue. All right. So let's begin. So as I said, there's a couple of different ways that you can oops, use your napkins. Um, some people like to use Maj Podge. Some people use gel medium. Um, if you use the glue stick, it is um, it dries more of a, like a matte finish. And so I kind of like, I like that look. I'm just putting this glue stick around, trying to get everywhere that I can. Um, the other nice thing about when you use a matte finish is you can stamp over it without any problems. If you want to stamp over it and you're using something else, you can use stays on ink. Um, and that, um, that one helps a lot. I, I don't like to use stays on ink because it makes my uh, stamps, it's hard to clean off. I know there's stays on cleaner and all of that, but I've just not been successful with stays on. So, all right. I better get going a little faster here or I'm not going to make my time today on this part. Sorry, guys. When I get talking, sometimes I forget to do some more crafting. So it's starting to get um, cold here in Michigan. We're definitely starting to see fall. You know, I'm sure some of the other people out there are starting to see some, some fall as well. Um, remember, this was my mop-up page. I'm going to go ahead and use this, too, because we're going to just include it in our pages. Since we did it within a time frame. So it's cold. Um, summers are short here in Michigan, but one of the things I love about Michigan is it's just beautiful. I love fall. 
All right, so this one, this one is gonna get a big flower. So, so I'm at two minutes. The other thing I like about using a glue stick is you can go right over the top of the napkin and it'll stick it down. And the glue stick dries fast compared to some of the other glues that are out there. Um, I'm going to go over this area because this is where it had the color picture from the book. And I can kind of cover that up and mute it a little more. We're getting there. We are getting there. So remember, so far we've started with a piece of our book page or junk mail. Then we went ahead and we did our layer of paint. Our third layer was Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist or some other form of spray and right now we are collaging napkin on and we're still pretty reasonable it's about at about 30 minutes but this is a lot of pages guys if we just would have done one or two um we'd be done by now but this is this is quite a few pages going to give us a lot to work with. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my last collage piece on here. And then we're going to move on to the next layer. So as I said before, you really want these to dry in between. Um, because I'm doing this live and I don't want it to be a five hour stream. I'm working with it a little damp. Um, I'm putting it close to a light that's so it didn't quite meet the five minute time frame because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just finish this up. We have two more pages that were really our mop up pages. So if I wouldn't have used those, we would have made our time frame. All right. Just remember, do not use, um, you do not want to use children's Elmer's glue, um, school glue, because as you start adding wet mediums to it, it will not stick. So this is a permanent glue. This all-purpose glue is a permanent glue. Um, so it's fine to use, but don't just think you can use um, children's glue because it will not stick once you get it wet. Okay, alrighty. So pretty good. So we this is all we had left of the napkin. And in fact, I think we'll go ahead and just use it up. Oops. Didn't stick down like I wanted it to. I'm gonna have to use a baby wipe on my fingers. I think my fingers are more sticky than the paper right now. One more piece, let's use this on, let me look real quick to see which one doesn't have a lot of stuff on it here. Um, here. 
Sticky, sticky, sticky. You know what? I'll use it on this this page. This was a we didn't paint on this one. This is the one that was stuck on the back of that other page, but we can make it a little more interesting rather than throw it away. Okay. There we go. Oops. See, it's, once it gets pretty wet, you've got to let it dry. So we're going to let these dry just a minute before we work on them anymore, um, or we're really going to have a mess. But while we're doing that, I'm going to clean my hands because I have turned my hands all different colors. So the next thing that I'm going to do, um, so I'm thinking we're going to do some stamping. Um, and then I also have a bunch of, how many of you have old punches that you just don't use anymore? Um, or you haven't used in a long time. So one of the things I like to do is I like to punch, um, let me get some paper towel here. I like to, when I have extra of book pages or something like that, I like to punch out little, little shapes. Um, I know punches are kind of going out of style. Um, some people are bringing them back and revitalizing them, but I just take and I just punch out shapes and things like that. So these are flowers and butterflies. And I do a lot of scallops sometimes. And it's just a lot of scraps that uh, I make faux buttons and things like that. So we are going to use some of those today. Um, and I think maybe, what else shall we use? Um, just kind of looking at what I have around on my desk. Um, let's just start with... Um, you know what, let's do some stamping. Some of these are drying. They're drying very nice. Um, and I want to do some stamping. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to um, mount them on blocks or anything like that. I'm just using my Mementos Tuxedo Black ink. Um, I'm going to use this stamp right here, which is a Heidi, um, I think, I can't remember. I think it's a Heidi stamp, I'm not sure. And then I'm going to use this text stamp. I don't know who it's from. Um, I actually got it at a garage sale for a dollar. It says $2, but I got it 50% off. And I've been wanting a text stamp. I don't have a lot of stamps. I'm not someone who collects a lot of stamps. Um, but I thought this one was cool. So we're just going to ink it up. And we are going to just start with our next layer. And I'm just going to set it down over the top. And we're just going to get what we get. We're not going to worry. If it doesn't stamp perfect, I love that. Does that look great? All right. So we're going to set that one to the side and we're going to stamp this beauty.
that's a little blurry, but I'm okay with that. We're just going to keep going. Let's try this one. Let's see how this one works out. I've never used this one before. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That works great. Not pretty. This one's still a little tacky. We're going to let that one dry a little longer. Um, let's see. Pretty. These ones are dry. I really like these music notes. The only thing I don't like about this, this was another one that I got at a garage sale. Um, it was actually an estate sale. Um, and this lady must have been a serious crafter because when I say um, they actually had to rent a building for her stuff. And um, I mean, she had like three and four of a lot of things. It was I thought I had a lot of stuff. And this one needs to dry a little bit more. Um, but I mean, she just had, it was unbelievable how much stuff she had. And um, everything, the day I went, everything was half off. And um, so I grabbed these stamps. The only thing I don't like about this stamp with the music notes is that it feels like maybe it's old. Um, I don't know if however she stored it or what the deal was. Um, because it has like a greasy feel on the top of it. So if any of you know um, why that is or if there's something I need to do, let me know because it's definitely has a, a feeling to it, like a sticky feeling to it. But I figured for a dollar, even if it was only good for a little while, um, it was worth it. So I bought it. All right, so we are getting there. But as I said, this lady, I mean, I, I just could not believe the amount of stuff she had. And three and four of things, and just was thought, yeah, I don't know. Of course, that's probably what my uh, estate will look like someday. My daughter will have to deal with it because I do have a lot of craft supplies. Um, it's amazing what you can get. And um, if you keep organizing it and compacting it, how much stuff you can end up with. Um, but I don't know about you. Some people don't appreciate the art and work of handmade things. Um, I had a friend of my mother-in-law's once say, I don't know why you need to make so many of the same thing over. Um, and I realized then and there that she was not ever going to understand the art. I don't know if any of you have ever had that experience with family members or friends who really just don't think that what you do is is worthy or that you should keep doing it over and over but 
you know, I don't smoke, I don't drink. I just like to create with my hands. So I guess if that's the worst habit I have, so be it. I'm so bummed that I can't see um, anybody talking. I don't know what's going on. Normally, oh, I love that one. Um, normally, I can see if people are talking, so I'm not sure what's going on, although YouTube's been acting up lately. I don't know if anybody else has had any problems, but it's kind of wanting to do its own thing. And I've seen a lot of my YouTube people that I follow are having some problems too, so... I guess I'm not the only one. All right. So that needs to stick down a little better. All right. So I think we have two more to stamp. Oh, I fibbed. We have three more to stamp. And then we're done with that. And I should have put my timer on. I'm sorry, guys. Although stamping takes me a little bit of time. I'm not the best stamper. But you would not have to, I mean, you could just do bits and pieces. This is a pretty big stamp that I'm using right now. This one is not wanting to stick down right here. Whoops. Sometimes the more you mess with it, the bigger mess you make. So you just peel it off. There. All right. So I don't know about you all, but fall is my favorite time to craft. One, because I can still keep my window open a little bit and get some fresh air. Winters are pretty harsh in Michigan, so, um, you know, I do a lot of crafting in the winter time, but um, in the fall, I can still keep my windows open and just enjoy some of that fresh air. Last one to stamp, if I can get my fingers to work here. All right, so here's what we have. All these pages. Oh, I didn't, I missed two. I didn't stamp two of them. How did that happen? All right. Well, I guess let's. Not sure how I did that. We'll, we'll stamp some more. Okay, 
There's that one. And we'll do a little bit of music notes on this one. There. Okay. So we are done with that. I moved my stamp out of the way. We to get a new paper. This one, the size, the journaling card one. Um, this one could be used as a page in my journal. I can fold it and the back of it would be good. So I will leave this one as a page and I'm not going to cut this or do anything with it. So I'm going to set that one to the side. Um, this one is definitely a good one for a page. Um, it can also be a, a card if I wanted to send it to somebody. So I'm going to set that one to the side as well. Um, this one, this one needs to be an embellishment because it's kind of flimsy. This could definitely be a page without a problem. So I'm gonna set that to the side. Um, so we'll use that one to embellish with. I think we'll use this one. No, nah, that one could be a page. This one's going to be an embellished one because of the back. I really love how this one turned out. Um, I think it can be a page. I will probably add some paper to the back of it for my journal, but I just, oh, I think that turned out really cool. So I don't know. Actually, both of these, I might keep both of those as pages. I think they turned out nice. All right. This one definitely needs some more color. Um, so, and then these, these have to be turned into something. I'm not loving these yet, um, but we're gonna work with these ones first. All right. So the next thing I do is I typically will, Think about what do I want on the back of my journaling cards. So I'm reaching over here into my pile of papers. And I like this. Um, I like the back of this, so it'll be good for a journaling card. But I don't like the front. So I'm just going to get my cutting cover out. And I'm going to start by squaring off the top. And we are going to make some journaling cards. So these journaling cards are going to be three and a half by five. And just because. <laughs> It's the, the size of the paper. Okay, so the next thing I like to do is if I have some older colored paper, I like the color of this paper. So um, I am gonna use this as a base. for my journaling card. Um, yep, okay. So, once again, I'm using this um, all-purpose glue stick because it's a permanent glue stick. You don't wanna use school glue on this. I 
need to get my fingers clean. I'm going to end up with off the edges just to give it you could use your paper trimmer but I want to give it some more dimension some more all right oh. no I didn't want to give it that much dimension all right now the next thing I want to do is get out of my distressing looking sorry for all the noise guys I'm looking for my blending tool for some reason I only have my black blending tool well I guess we're going to use black ink Just going around the edges. All right. Okay. And now I'm going to select one of these pieces. So let's see here. We're going to go four and a half. Uh, let's go four and a half this way. I'm going to save that piece. I'm going to trim off this edge because it has a lot of white on it. And I'm going to go three and a quarter. should have probably gone three to eight. So I'm going to take off just a smidge. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. I want these embellishments to be pretty flat and not bulky. Um, especially when it's a journaling card. So it needs a little something still. So I happen to have just, I'm only using things that are on my desk. So I'm going to add just a little bit of fiber and I think a flower. And we're gonna be done with this piece. So just ripping this. And I'll put it right here. And let's look at, or maybe we'll add, you know what, let's add a butterfly. Let's add a butterfly. Um, how about this one? So, oh, look. No, I think I like it the other way better. So I do need to get my fabric tack because I don't want to put this on without my fabric tack. Because we are using fabric. Okay. 
Okay. Let's put our butterfly down right there. Hmm. I think we need something a little more. I need some bling or something like that. Let's see if I have any in my drawer. One of these drawers, I think I do. Oh, you know what? I've been dying to use these too. We're going to use these up today. Um, I'm going to just take some of my liquid pearl. I'm going to do three little dots. And I'm going to do three little dots up here. And there, we're done. There is one journaling card complete. Isn't that cute? And you can journal on the back. So we're going to set that one to the side. So let's do another one. So here's our other piece. Um, this time, I think, I think we're going to leave some of that blue on there this time. So I just want to cover up. Let's see, how do I want to do this? I want to cover it up like this. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to glue this down. Trim that off. All right. Let's see, I think we'll use this piece. This was a piece of our, that we cut off. We're gonna do a little tearing to give it some character. Okay. All right, let's see what else can we do here? Oh, we use a little piece of fabric. So I hope this inspires some of you to just get out some old book pages and just let's use them up or get go to your recycling bin. And, you know, if you are like me and you work full time and you just, you know, if you can use five minutes a day, you know, at least get that creativity going.
Okay, there's another card. Done. So I hope you like this. Um, I hope this was a worthwhile tutorial for you. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you've not subscribed to my channel, please go over to Rachel's Super Cute Creations and check me out. Um, subscribe. And um, have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching.